Hi, everybody. My name is Ali Conte. I'm born in Gambia. Gambia is a small little country in West Africa, probably one of the smallest countries in the continent. Uh, I came to Congo about 25 years ago, and I married in Congo and have my kids in DRC. At that time, it's called Zaire, during uh, the leadership of the famous president called Mobutu Sese Seko. I've been doing business in Congo, or Zaire, which is mainly trading. I buy coffee in Congo, process it. I have two factories in the East and Kinshasa, export it to London, and I fly to London, or flew to London, and trade it in the market, both Robista and Arabica. Years after, then there is another civil war came in Congo uh, before uh, the father Kabila came in. Uh, it was a very difficult time. The economy was just going down, and uh, uh, nobody have interest beside the major mining companies, which is the Belgium group and Congolese group called Jacquemine. Uh, during the war, I'm going to show you the country first, so you can see uh, the, EMI, the, the, the country first, the, how big the country is, about 60 million. Uh, this is the last census they take a uh, year before the election, which I personally believe Congo today should be around 75 million people, because some of the rural area, uh, I don't think uh, the guys taking the census money to get to them there. Uh, uh, Congo is the third biggest country in Africa, after Sudan and Algeria. It has the 60% forestry reserve of the continent, and second after Amazon in Brazil. Uh, you can see where Kinshasa is, and the back Congo, which is next to the sea point and uh, Lumumbashi, Katanga region, where I mean uh, the mineral capital, I would say, was one of the uh, biggest deposits of gold, copper, and so on. Uh, in this country, when uh, 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 the father Kabila came to power after so many years of civil war in, in Congo, uh, uh, there was only about 10,000 uh, fixed line in DRC, sorry, 15,000 fixed line in DRC, and 10,000 analog, which was built by a U.S. company with uh, some uh, Congolese and U.S. partnership entrepreneur. Uh, during those days, uh, you have only probably uh, Mobutu's uh, bodyguard, the ministers, and wealthy business people. For regional exchange, you can see the currency. Uh, there was no trust in the banking system during those times, because when you put your money deposit in the bank, you could not withdraw the, withdraw the cash when you need. Says you have $10 in the bank, and you make a check, you go to the bank, they cannot pay you. So you have a trader on the side that will give you maybe $5 and take your check and uh, manage it uh, 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 some, somehow. Here is the most beautiful country. You can see the Congo River, uh, uh, the fishermen doing the fishing around this area. Uh, this is where, this is the uh, rural airport, uh, because we have about four airport in the country. There is no infrastructure like road. No, railroad only between Kinshasa and Matadi, and mainly uh, uh, those are the main cargo from uh, outside the world coming through uh, uh, Matadi. We do have, uh, during a fancy partner with Rwanda, or you have uh, things coming through uh, uh, Tanzania, across uh, Uganda, Rwanda, come to Kinshasa. So, and also Tanganyika River, uh, the goods come to, to Congo. So I'm going to talk about uh, my venture, which is uh, my company called Congolese Wireless Networks. We abbreviate as CWN. 
When Father Kabila took over the uh, Congo, uh, his first speech to the nation, he said to build the infrastructure, the law and order, legal system in the country in order to attract outside investors, and communication, telecommunication. Two days after that speech, I call a friend of mine to ask him, do you know the Minister of Telecom? He said, yes, uh, and he's a banker. Today he's in the US, living there. Uh, he said, yes, I come from the same state with him. And he took me to introduce me to the minister. And I met his excellency, and we have a chat about telecommunication in the country. And I asked him the procedure, how to get the license, that I would like to have a license in Congo for telecom. Well, here he is. I have no experience, no pyro information before on telecommunication. But as a businessman, I see the need only not for my business, but the millions of Congolese for communication outside. I sit sometime, I go to the post office, I will stay for five hours just waiting to call somebody out of the country to pass the connection. This has been done there, people go and sleep in front of the post office in order to get telephone connection. So the minister listened to me after the meeting and I left and he walked me to the door. He said to me, Mr. Conte, do you know to build a network is a lot of money? But I didn't have the idea. And I asked him, Your Excellency, if the government award me the license, I will build the network. And from there on, I went through, call a friend, ask him, do you have or know anybody who, in the telecom industry or the vendors? He was in the US. He said to me, yes, I do. A friend in Benin who lives in Paris. I have to put a feasibility study for the government. I called this gentleman and talked to him about my project. And he said that he's interested. And two, three days after, he flew to Kansas and joined me. And I called the minister. We went to meet the minister. And uh, he asked several questions to get the date of Congo, the uh, telecommunication, teledensity in the country. Uh, we went to the central bank. Uh, he got a chance to meet uh, the governor of central bank, who was a former uh, city banker, uh, which was a big help for us, and uh, give him all the details and the information. So from there on, he flew back to Paris and came with uh, a proposal three, uh, less than three weeks, present to the government. After the ministerial meeting, uh, the minister called me to deposit 100,000 that they approved my application. Then there will be two GSM network in the country. So we paid the 100,000. Now I am expected to get a GSM license. Three weeks after he called me, he said, no, you have to pay additional 200,000. <laughs> a month or so, he said, you have to pay $8 million for the license. <laughs> then I went to the minister, I said to him, please look, the country is in a war, and no one gonna pay 10 million. He said, what will be the best price? I said, go back to the cabinet and give my proposal two million for the license. Finally, the government agreed two million and give me one year to build the network all over the country. I couldn't raise funds. Everywhere I go, from IFC, MIGA Political Insurance, uh, Cooperation Belge, uh, you name it, we couldn't get no funding. Here, As times go on, I have to meet the deadline. And I went back to the minister to extend 
the deadline to give us more time, and uh, which he was very helpful to do so. Uh, when that, I get that deadline, I went back uh, to Nortel, this friend that worked for Nortel. He said that there is a system called Piconode, which will cost you two million, because every vendor needs 110% guarantee for Congo. No insurance, no bank, even the locals don't want to invest in the country. Here, I flew to Paris. I met the president of the North Shell. With my lawyer, we decide to go with North Shell. But saying so, I have to uh, uh, cooperate a company in the United States in Delaware by my lawyer called African Wireless and have 60% of my company to be owned by African Wireless so that it'd be much easier for me to raise funding. And uh, with him, we have few people afterward. Uh, when I meet the Nortel guys, uh, meet with them in Paris, they can give me this 4,000 subscriber uh, uh, network to be built with five cell sites. And they need my deposit in cash. The total amount is two, they need 1.5 was the only saving I have. And I asked my wife, he said, go for it. And I flew to Paris and I gave the check, 1.5 million to the president of North Shell. And signing that contract was a big party, just like a number of people here. And uh, the president, when we signed, he took a glass of champagne I said, no, I'll take water, <laughs> because <laughs> I'll take some pain the day that we do the inauguration. I'm going to show you the inauguration briefly uh, here. Sorry, the inauguration uh, will come briefly. Uh, uh. On my name That's the and the GSM. names of my colleague, I take this opportunity to thank you and welcome you here today for the opening of our network, Congolese Wireless Network, be the first GSM network in Republic Democratic of Congo. Okay, uh, I'm gonna go briefly the time, don't let me. Uh, uh, so this was the first opening uh, GSM in Congo. It was 4,000 the capacity, if I do 2,000, I get good quality. But the day we launch, we have 35,000 people line up to get phone. And we were selling that phone for, for $350. We have no billing, no prepaid system, no satellite link, nothing. So doing so, uh, 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 the drama now to raise funding for Congo. I have moved all over the world trying to look Every major government in Western Europe, South African government, everywhere in Congo, as outside, was impossible to raise funds. Nortel finally see that there is a huge potential. What they can do to give me a switch, that will take about 20,000. That switch, the day they install it, we have 35,000 connected. Then we look for the prepaid billing, uh, satellite link in US. When we bought these satellite links and uh, uh, prepaid machine, nobody would like to leave Massachusetts to come to Congo because the State Department banned the traveling to Congo. We finally, gradually, things change. We get guys coming to Congo and we put the prepaid system in DRC. We launch the first GSM network, which you have seen there. From there on, after two years, we're struggling and have the personnel sacrificed on salaries because I couldn't pay them. But one thing what I told them, this company don't belong to me, it belongs to all of us. I might not be able to pay you today, and let's work at something. My deputy who is sitting among you guys here, work out with the personnel, they take 25% salary, 75, we wait till whenever we can make it. 
So doing so, we build the network together in those days. After years and years, the war started in Congo, all over the place, and the war came back. They have the four governments, uh, four, uh, uh, five different political parties. Uh, those four political parties uh, become four vice president and make a national union. Uh, two years after that, Vodacom and many other networks contact me and join uh, a partnership deal in Congo. From 30,000, when we joined with Vodacom, estimate my company with 30,000 subscribers was about $75 million. We take maybe about, I took about 10 million to pay other local expensive personnel the rest to inject in the company as my capital and change the infrastructure name to Vodacom Congo. I retained 49% and Vodacom have 51%. Yeah. Yes. Um, you know, you, you told us um, some amazing stories on the, on the phone about the rollout in some of the uh, areas of Congo affected by the war. And uh, I, I want you to make sure you have time to, to, yes. to get to that, because that's an amazing, yeah. amazing thing you did, the actual challenge of rolling this out. Yes, we, we have to take uh, initiative to open uh, dialogue between the government and the five rebel groups in the country. One, uh, once uh, uh, we launch in Congo, the population want to call other part of the cities, other part of the country, it was impossible. So what we did to talk to the government so that we be able to talk to the rebel leaders, which we did, we met some of them in South Africa through to the uh, 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 different channel. They agreed, they said, you have to pay the license. We said, no, we have only one license that we paid with the government. Finally, the first one allowed us was Goma. When we put the, uh, a cell site in Goma, uh, then Jean-Pierre Bemba, the one you hear recently, called us in this north part. We built, we went there, we put a cell, a cell site there. So all the four rebels invite us to put network to extend the capacity there. So the population, the government, the rebel, we all start to speak to each other. So I think uh, the, uh, 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 the GSM in, in DRC have changed the dynamic. Our presence and what we have did there have opened the way all over and the president today used that as an instrument to go to track investors outside that if you see what Vodacom did in Congo, why not you coming to Congo? Huh. So when I started, the teledensity was almost, as I said, 20,000. Today, a country of uh, 60 million, we have about six million subscribers. <laughs> My network have three million subscribers. And we are connecting, our network connecting, 1.5 to 2 million a year now going. And Elliot, the, um, all those uh, investors and companies that turned you down, what's the estimated value now of, of this company you've built? Well, well it is, uh, as I said, I have uh, old friends in the US who joined with me. Uh, uh, they want to exit uh, because of their age. Uh, the company was estimated not uh, about a month ago, about 1.6, 1.7 billion net, and which is 500 US dollar net per subscriber. <laughs> yeah.